Hi, hello, and welcome to the very first episode ever of Game Pass or Pass. I'm Corey. Joining first me is... Last episode, maybe? Uh, I think we'll at least get two out. Maybe. Depending on how we feel. I've got two years of Game Pass, so we'll, we'll see. I'm Corey. This is Basher. Say hello, Basher. Well, they know who we be. It's the same people as last time, right? All our listeners are coming right over. Oh, for sure. I, I'm sure yeah. that they're going to... All our Twitter followers, which are mainly just people I know, <laughs> are... Uh, that's not, I guess that's not true. Like, half of them are now. So, we'll probably follow us. But I will tweet this out, believe it or not. I will, I will reset my Twitter password just to tweet this out. On Game Pass or Pass... We have done the work for you. We are playing Game Pass games that are available on PC, Xbox, both, sometimes only one or the other, and we are going to tell you if that game is worth playing or if you should pass on it. And on this first episode, we played Full Metal Furies, which is a game that Basher suggested. I had never yes. heard of it. Yes, it's, uh, I, I like the look of it. Also, it was the first thing in the list, so I figured, <laughs> why well, not did- start here? Um, where did you get the list? Because like on on Xbox, it's it's alphabetical. So uh, I went to uh, the website version of it, and then uh, it was all listed by um, I listed by PC, and then uh, I guess it just did its own thing from there. A suggested, we suggest you should play Full Metal Furies. So at first, and when I first read it, I thought it was furries, like Full Metal Furries. I was like, oh, that'll be interesting, I guess. But then I. When I looked closer, I was like, oh, it's Furies. Furies. I mean, that's sort of snap said he thought he was playing a furry game. And I'm like, I'm not <laughs> against that. I don't know why people are anti-furry. Like, I'm not against it. It's just when you suggested it, I was a little... I feel like everybody's anti-furry right now. And we should respect people in their, in their choices. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, whatever. Hashtag furry life. Full Metal Furies is developed by Cellador Games, which you might have heard from. They've made the very popular Rogue Legacy. And the ever popular Don't Shit Your Pants. I never I've played actually, the second one. I actually have. I made Chris play it too. <laughs> so it's a it's a very it's a very good text adventure sort of style thing. You're oh, a guy. I'm out. Great. Yeah, you're a guy in the bathroom and he's gotta go to the bathroom and yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a browser-based game, so you can play that right now with a quick Google search. So, uh, I've actually never played Rogue Legacy though, but I think Rogue Legacy was kind of the first. Uh, was it Rogue Like or Rogue Light? Well, uh, the two those those are two different things. Um, I don't know what the diff- different things are though. I know like uh, a Rogue Like I want to say is very faithful to the Rogue genre, whereas Rogue Light is like an easy like an easy version of it. Okay, because according to the internet, Rogue Legacy is a rogue-like game, uh, which would make sense. With, like, I guess whatever. Oh, like, like L-I-K-E, like a like-like from Zelda, like-like. Oh, like like when you're in like middle school and you're you asked your question, she's into you. Like exactly. Like, do you like do you like 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 me or just like me? So yeah, yeah. and I Rogue Legacy was like the first time that I feel like that genre got like a boost in terms of uh exposure that was the first one that i had heard of because that one kind of crossed and that was on everything that was on xbox playstation switch you know all that fun it's on switch now but yeah so uh regular price for this game if you're not a game pass subscriber is $19.99 and if you don't want to play it on xbox it's also available on switch pc xbox ps4 i guess it's on xbox i already said xbox and it's also on linux believe it or not what because linux is bitch you can uh, for all six of you out there so this is also what is on iOS as well? I didn't see an iOS. Mm-hmm. But Google, I mean, Google could have lied to me. I mean, Google might have it if it's Google, iOS. Google would never lie to you. Well, if it's on iOS, they might. They don't, they don't like each other. Uh, this is also an Xbox Play Anywhere game, so you don't have to have a uh, specific Xbox Game Pass on PC or just Xbox Game Pass. Uh, if you have either one, you can play it on Xbox or PC. And we also found out it is cross-play, so you can play on PC while your friends are playing on console. That's what we did. You were playing... Well, we tried, but... Uh, <laughs> it <yeah>. worked. <laughs> did it, though? It, it did. did it? It, it, Snaps and I were fine. <laughs> I'm going to blame this uh, video game for my bad connection. I, I think that might have been a Windows thing, but the I can Google confirm... Google itself told me my, connect- my connection is very fast. Like the fast. Extremely fast. Yes. I, you should be uploading everything and not me. That's what I found out <laughs> from that 
<laughs> from that exchange. Um, there is also no DLC. There are no microtransactions for you people out there that do not like them. For the achievement hunters, I would I, give this game a problem. Personally, what? I love them, some, some microtransactions. Oh, yeah? You just yeah. love... It's my favorite part about a video game, personally. <laughs> you, I like... bet you love Apex Legends, then. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did for a little bit. I, I still like that game. So, uh, this is a hard one that we're sort of toying around with. Um, I am an achievement hunter, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to put in like an achievement difficulty out of 10 in terms of how to rate it, in terms of how easy or difficult it is to get all the achievements. I gave it a 5 out of 10 on that aspect, just because there aren't a lot of achievements, and I... I from what I gather, about half of them you could get just by kind of playing the game. The other half, you'd actually have to put some time and effort into it. So, but that's uh, what I, go that's ahead. What like, that's what I like about a uh, that's a, that's a system of achievements or trophies, whatever you want to call it, that I like is the ones where eighty uh, percent of them should be just play the game, and then the rest should be like, all right, do something extra that isn't too uh, ridiculous. I like. I like about a 70-30 split, but I always want like I want like one 100 achievement point achievement to be like really difficult. That's okay for me. Like I, I hate it when to like thousand point it. You have to like the last achievement is really difficult, but it's only worth like ten points. I'm like and fuck if, that. <laughs> right. And then on top of that is like uh if there's a uh this is going to be a thing where uh, I hear me say it often where this difference between difficult and uh tedious or whatever else right. so if that if that last if that platinum trophy is going to be completely tedious then i'm fucking out i just can't basically yeah like god of war i was out. yeah yeah, so. yeah i'm not doing that and uh the last piece is unfortunately it is not xbox one and x enhanced for all of you x owners out there like myself which is kind of a bummer uh sitting on my butt looking at my 4k oled I was like this is kind of blurry so but that's because it's also a pixel art side scroller beat 'em up RPG. Yeah, I wasn't uh I wasn't too uh look I was looking forward to it too much with the because of the artwork, I'm kinda over pixel art. Uh but this is one that has has enough flair, enough effects that it works. It it doesn't look like every other pixel art game. Right. Which is usually what pixel art drives me crazy. It's because you can't tell them apart. Um, I've actually played quite a few pixel art games lately, mainly because of Xbox Game Pass. So, but you can definitely tell this game has a style of it. But I did not expect this game with the title to be Full Metal Furies to be a side-scrolling beat 'em up. And then also, once we got into it, that it's basically uh, someone described it as Castle Crashers, which I have played, but it's been a long time. But there's some super deep RPG elements here that I did not expect. Yeah, this is uh, this is. I would say this is Castle, uh, Thinky Man's Castle Crashers, because Castle Crashers is like literally kind of a, uh, like an O to like the old school beat em ups, where it's kind of like you just kind of left to right bashing your way through. This is, requires a little more thought process, a little more setup, uh, especially like with different classes. And uh, at first, the I thought was going to be annoying um, idea of like certain enemies can only be hurt by certain classes. Right. But it actually kind of amps up the uh, the the chaos in a good way. Yeah, that's. I think the biggest surprise about this game is that how how deep it is for a beat 'em up. Because, you know, when I think of beat 'em up, I I instantly go back to like the TMNT game. You know, the the side scrolling TMNT arcade game, or even like The Simpsons or X Men or whatever. Um, Death and Return of Superman for all you. You know, Superman fans okay. out there. All right, <laughs> and and like you said, like they're 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 mindless and they're fun. So when I hopped into this and then stuff like that started happening, I was like, that's kind of strange. But then like it it almost it it subtly is teaching you about combos and teaching you that having there's a reason that you have different classes. So like when you pick when you pick one of the classes, like I'm a fan of the snap the sniper personally, um, but you have you have like the tank and the sniper. And I was like, I, I, it gives you like a difficulty rating out of stars. It's like three out of five stars difficulty. I'm like, what? How could it be difficult? It's a beat em up. Right. You know? Like, what, what are you getting at here? And it takes a little while to sort of things to click. But then once it sort of forces you to start doing things, like you said, attacking certain enemies, you sort of start to realize that, hey, I can like chain these attacks together with these two characters. 
and unfortunately we didn't get to do it, but I was able to do it, is you can really play off each other's attacks. And one of my favorite things to do was with like the tank, he's got like a she or she, she's got a, a shout and it knocks him in the air. So you shout him, they pop in the air. And then with the sniper, they but have a slow down ability. We did pull that actually. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, I, I remember you commenting like, like commenting that, oh, I shot him in the air. Yeah. And it was, it was really, that was really cool. It was just like, like a teamwork thing that I haven't felt like that since like Marvel Ultimate Alliance days of just like, hey, pop him up in the air and then I'm going to, you know, hit him with my web, which, you know, that was always just something cool to do. It was never a mechanic of the game, but this game really leans in on doing stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping uh, the f- the more the farther we get into it, the more those exist, the more opportunity for that happens. Because uh, my my issue with a lot of these co-op games right now is like co-op means you're playing with someone and that's it. The, the right. characters themselves don't really interact. Uh, this one, like this game so far, like actually requires like even when you're playing single player, uh, there you can you're supposed to switch between characters because. It, it, the game is built in a way where where people want need to play together, and I, and I think that is one of the biggest strengths of, strengths of the game so far, for me anyway. No, I I definitely agree. It's even when you're playing it alone, like the fact that they they go out of their way to let you switch to between two characters is extremely smart in terms of design because it still teaches you how to play the game. So even when you know I'm playing by myself and then you know we we literally had this scenario to where I played for about an hour before you were able to and so I was able to hop in and just be like, "Oh, hey, like I I know what you're I know what you're doing and like the progress that you're going through because I already did it." And since I already am used to having two characters, yes, I'm not controlling you, but I, I I can still play off of you because I know what to expect and I know what your moves can do. Which is kind um, of genius because the now yeah. like you go online, it's like there's no like like you already know what to do with multiple characters. So there's like less not less communication, but less uh, less need for I less set up this uh, complicated thing. It's like no, like we're we're in the midst of battle and I already know what you're going to do just by instinct. So I'm going to play off of that. Right. It, it's, it's got like a weird like fighting game vibe to it of just like, since I know this character, I can sort of get in your mind and sort of understand, you know, the chains that you're going to do and stuff. So, and it's, I, I, I don't want to say like it's super deep because I don't want to, you know, like you're not going to be pulling off like 60 hit combos or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it, it's still just extremely satisfying to be able to sort of kind of anticipate what you're going to do and, and be able to to play off of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 hard it's like not... a it's like an extremely satisfying alley oop, basically. Exactly, that's exactly what it comes down to. Because you don't want to oversell it, but I think the reason we we're trying not to oversell that piece of the gameplay is because, like you said earlier, the uh, a co op beat 'em up is usually just two characters side by side doing whatever they want to do uh, right. individually. So like when you so this being the one of the first ones I've played where they. I just kind of put some thought into the different classes working together. I'm like, oh, like I want, I do want to sell this, but like you said, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, a, a Flint and Silk Chaos Theory level co-op. Right. right. So I, I got probably, I want to say about four or five hours into it. Um, and I will say that I, I'm I'm a big fan of the way that the game progresses in terms of uh, RPG elements as well. So, you know, you get your standard gold and stuff throughout the levels and you level up, but you actually feel like you are getting more powerful, which is something that might seem like a no-brainer. But in a beat-em-up game, that's pretty hard to do um, to actually kind of feel like your character is progressing. But th- there's actually some pretty deep uh, skill trees in this, too, in terms of... Yeah what's like what what weapons you can take and so like for the instance the sniper like you would think it's just a sniper rider, but it's like no it's there's different snipers that have different um like reload rates and different fire rates so that completely sort of changes your uh how you approach situations um but what's also interesting is like all four classes like the engineer the tank and uh the sniper i'm forgetting one now but they all actually do play quite differently uh and that's pretty rare for a beat-em-up as well and 
uh, I will say, like, I, I tended to not uh, the fighters, the other one. Um, the tank and the fighter are kind of your more traditional kind of beat em up, whereas the engineer and the sniper are much more different. Uh, the sniper basically has uh, whenever you, your main attack is like is like a red laser sight, and that's your that's your trajectory of your bullets. And then the engineer has like a cone, uh, a cone surrounding them, and so anything in that cone, uh, you do damage to by she's got a gun as well that she shoots, and so. Being able to kind of switch between those classes when I'm playing alone was really interesting because I can switch not only between the classes that I have with me, but I have got the dual characters. So I tended to kind of stick with the tank and the sniper. I thought that was kind of, I think that's probably what most people would do their first time around. Um, But really diving into those trees, even only four or five hours into the game, like it's kind of shocking how, how much you can actually edit and change and just sort of uh, make it your own. And sort yes. of find something that works for you. That's something that I I don't know if I've ever gotten that from a beat 'em up. Maybe I'm playing the wrong beat 'em ups, but yeah, like I was a big beat 'em up fan like coming up. So like I've took I took some time away from them because they all kind of started doing the same thing. This definitely feels like more, at times more of an RPG than uh than the beat 'em up because even with the with the hub world where you start where you do the where you switch out your skills and upgrade your upgrade your abilities and whatnot. Like, that seems like a very uh, RPG, like, that's when it just becomes a pure RPG at that point, and people are just sitting around a campfire, like, all right, uh, what's the layout going to be, what are you going to have, like, what am I going to have, like, so we can actually like, play off each other well, and, and, like, set up these combos, and, and whatnot, so, like, I really dig their direction for this, like, this is, this is one of those games, where, like, where it gets real deep real quickly, and, like, before you know it, like, is uh, how how what's what's the saying? Um, easy easy to easy to pick up, hard to master. Right. Like this is definitely I'm definitely getting that feel for this because I can have anyone kind of just jump in and play this game with me. But if I really want to go hard, if I really want to like focus on certain things and and try to do certain things, then I could really just kind of dig my heels into like creating uh this over or, or overthinking rather creating this unique character for myself yeah for sure i i definitely agree with that it's it's again like anyone can and anyone can say here go beat these people up like that's been the basis of video games since you know (laughs) the atari uh so that aspect is really nice that you can kind of hand the controller to anyone and sort of uh figure it out like and this is a weird comparison but it sort of reminds me of like the progression of mario kart like Mario Kart, anyone can do it, but to do like your power sliding and, and to, to really start hitting those corners and stuff, it, it takes some practice. And there's two type of Mario Kart players. You know, there's people that just play it and there's the people that get into it. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, I, I'm also a big fan of the level designs. Um, they do some unique things to sort of keep it varied in terms of how you scroll the screen. Um, you know, you can scroll left and right, up and down, but they, they do some interesting things with perspective since it is a pixel art game to where it'll sort of zoom in and out to give you different, um, I don't, I, I guess perspective might be the right word, but it, it just, it, it keeps things varied in a way that you're not just always sort of zoomed in on the same thing. It, it's pleasing to the eyes in terms of being able to, to just sort of change things up. And the the locations are pretty varied too. Um, it sometimes I feel like you stay a little too long in one sort of um, setting, I guess you could say. And event, but they definitely do change it up. Like there's different themes and everything like that. So, it, in terms of just like a, a, a beat 'em up, like it's got a ton of variety that that a beat 'em up needs. But then it goes one step further, and that's where I think it's it's standing out for me. Just in terms of like I when I picked this game up for the first couple hours, like the first couple hours went by really quick, and I I just didn't expect to to have all of this depth here. And so I was like, wow, like this is this is really cool, and this is awesome. Yeah, and uh, and to build off what you were saying about the the look of it in the in the, in the graphical settings, it's just kind of like uh, what really helps the pixel art because again like i'm i'm i think i've said this already i'm over pixel art um uh, but what helps the pixel art in this game specifically the art style is that the only real pixel art is the characters is ba- but everything else is also on a uh, um a uh, what's the uh, a cel- like a cel shaded background or something right so like the, so like the action really pops the characters really pop so like even though you have four people on screen at a time and things are blowing up and uh and things are getting shot at and whatnot 
you know you never lose yourself because the blue from the character does not match the blue in the background because it's like once like a more of a painted effect and once this this really sharp pixel effect so like i really like the way they get figured out how to uh make it so that chaos does not look too chaotic right i I, I never lost myself in this game which is like something that happens with beat em ups a lot even even game like castle crashers i I would go like all right which one am i again like all right but like this this is like no i know exactly where i am at all times and i'm I'm never going to lose myself yeah definitely and i the best the best thing i can say about a pixel art game is like when i forget it's pixel art and i'm just playing the game to me that's a big compliment because there's definitely games that i have played that it's just like it's just hard on the eyes like you said it's it's and sometimes it's not about losing yourself it's just like like the jagged edges eventually just sort of start yeah. looking you know you you see the jagged edges you don't you don't see the art anymore and with this like it, it took five minutes before i even was just like oh like this is I, i'm not looking at the pixel art this is just a good looking game so and like you said the colors and everything pop but it's also extremely important like you said because different characters sometimes have to attack certain enemies you know you you never are confused about which one you want to attack like they're very good about making sure that the colors are very very different and uh and we're like for your colorblind people, there are really good colorblind options because uh, Chris is colorblind, and so you know sometimes he has to do stuff like that. And you know he so he, that stuff is important, especially when you have uh, colors that are so prominent in uh, how you play the game. But they never, I, I never was had an issue with that, which is which is important. Like if you're going to have me play this game for many hours, like you said, it's it's hard. You got to make sure that stuff is right, and those are the little touches that some developers don't do. So. Um, but I guess the, the one place where I'm not digging the game is probably the story. Um, oh, that's a story? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, it. It tries to be witty and funny and comical, and uh, I, I can't say that any of it's landed for me yet. Um, uh, like, it, it's to the point, like, I can't even really describe it because it's... I don't want to say, like, I've forgotten it, but me describing it doesn't isn't going to help you. It's just pretty generic in terms of trying to be funny. Like, there's a lot of like, oh, whoops, sorry about that. You know, just like, uh, like morning newspaper cartoon style. It's hard to na- it's hard to nail funny. Like, you, like, like scary is pretty easy. You got your jump scares, you got your tactics, and whatnot. But uh, it's hard to nail funny. Uh, in, in the, I guess the ghost, the gold standard would be. Uh, the portal series for a while so it's like but the issue is like you got to have like not just funny people but talented people like write stuff like that so like so when you so, so the second you set the story i'm like oh wait i forgot i even had a story like so like i kind of just skipped through all the story parts and that's going to be a big issue probably going forward with me because i don't i'm so used to the story not mattering that i'm just going to be like whatever like it has a story nobody cares right and and it's i don't want to say like it doesn't i guess i'm it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better like the style of storytelling like it's not going to suddenly change up what it's doing from what i'm seeing um so it's hard for me to say that you know like oh like it'll get there you know or something like that but i i don't think it's going to it doesn't seem like it is but at the same time like you know it it's not terribly important, but they definitely went out of their way, it seems, to try and make a funny and compelling, witty story with the banter between the characters. And it's prominent. Like, it, it, there's every level, usually, um, there is some sort of banter. And that's... I I commend them for making it easy to skip <laughs> because, it, <laughs> you know, it, it only takes two button presses, but at the same time, you know... That, that's kind of a double-edged sword. It's like, you don't want people to skip it, but at the same time, if they're not enjoying it, you got to give them a, a way to sort of just be like, all right, let me get to the stuff that I do want to get to. Um, so I commend them on that. But but that's really my only hang-up with it. And that the fact that it's not Xbox One X enhanced, like, that's not a problem. That's just, I think, that's annoying. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I want to get that that super, especially with, like, a pixel art game, you know, it's like, I want that super crisp textures and, or super crisp uh, visuals. So, yeah, but that's... that's and I don't, and I don't know if it has been. I don't know if it was a, um, a, a choice on their part or whatnot. But like, yes, the, uh, like, the pixel art could be sharper. But I think they almost want that, like, a muddy effect with it. Right. Based so on where the setting is. And yeah. 
so so it's not popping would, too yeah. much off of the 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 paint the the painted like backgrounds, but an, but another thing I, I I did like uh about the gameplay is how they is not not every single mission is go left to right and shoot the thing. Like there are many games kind of later around where it's like you just need to survive for a certain amount of time and not right. worry about shooting and so 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 it looks like going forward they might be going deeper in the game they may be looking to change things up just to keep things fresh and you're not doing the same thing over and over again. And where the end of, where the end goal is essentially like build your own build your own uh, character build your own squad and uh, see how unique. Uh, you you are compared to other people by the end you by the end of the game, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And yeah, I'm farther than you. I can say that. Yeah, they definitely are always trying to do something to to keep it. You know, it's like it's not whether it's the perspective, whether it's the camera angles, whether it's what you're doing. They always try to make the next level that you did not the same as the one before. Um, they're always trying something. You know, they're 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 trying to make sure that you don't get bored with it. And I think it works pretty well. I mean, it, you can't. I don't recommend playing it for 10 hours straight, you know, I mean, if you want to go for it, but you know, like it's not going to, you know, keep you engaged for that long, but it's definitely going to do more than the average beat em up will. Right. Um, so that's, that's a huge, huge plus for it. So, but, um, I think that's, I don't think I have anything else to really say. Uh, I, I was surprised by this quite a bit. I, I did not expect to, uh, I, I did. I definitely judged it by its cover and I judged it by its name and uh, I literally had no idea what this game was and so I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Um, no, I'm I, I'm going to keep this installed. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, for sure. If that if the, if that says if that's a uh, uh, a recommendation on any level, like I'm just going like I'm just going to keep this game installed because I'm coming back to this uh, and I'll, I'll be playing more of this just to see just to see like because I want to build my tank out honestly. Right. Yeah, you want to see what else it can do. <laughs> so, and then after that, you've got three other classes, and it's it's one of the interesting things is like I don't like the engineer. Like, I just for whatever reason I can't get it down. But for some odd reason as well, I'm just kind of like, but maybe I'm doing something wrong. Like maybe right. I need to like right. maybe I just need to keep playing with it, and then it ended up being the class I really want to play because I'm definitely that type of uh, player to where you know anything that's a class, whether it's you know Overwatch or this, it's like I pick up kind of the the go-to, which was the tank in this, or like Mercy in, in Overwatch. It's like, oh, I'm great at this. I'm really good at this. I don't want to play that other stuff because it's hard and difficult and I don't like it. But then eventually, you know, someone else picks Mercy. And so I'm like, well, now, great. Now I have to be something. And then it's like, oh, shit, I actually do like this. I just had to give it more time, and I'm just an idiot. So, <laughs> but so that that's where I... I there's also a lot of mystery with this game. There's a lot of side stuff that you can do that I won't go into for spoiler reasons, but there are secret bosses and secret passages and secret, you know, secret secrets uh, that are a lot of fun to explore and get to know. So there's also some end game stuff that I've looked into. That's also pretty cool. So it's for, even if you don't have game pass, it's only 20 bucks, which I think is crazy good. That, that, that's a steal for this game. Uh, uh, yeah. It has, this has too much content for just $20. Like is right. it, this is, this is definitely a game that has way like, oh shit like because I'm I'm playing it right now actually and like again I'm just different things like just again like the, the level design like it's just like you you don't know what to expect going from one place to the one place to the next to the, to the next I think it's uh it's going this game is going to stay fresh for for a long time for me yeah for sure and it's got a cat that you can pet. That's just the first familiar you get. You get you get different kinds of familiars. Right. So I, I, the fact that you can pet the cat is an instant win. I think it's fair to say it just it just won game of the year, even though it came out last year. So, <laughs> <laughs> but so I think it's fair to say that we're both going to give this on uh, Game Pass or Pass. We're going to give it a give it a pass. I think I think everyone should check this out. Yeah, and and before and we might want to. Uh... Uh, clarify. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah, passes. Yeah. It, it's a pass. pass with flying colors. You should not pass on it, as we like to say. There we go. There so we yes, go. yes. It do not pass up the opportunity to be full. And we're done. That yeah. all. Yeah, we're definitely. definitely and furious. Done. Again, it's available for 19.99 on Switch, PC, Xbox, PS4, and Linux. Uh, it's on both Xbox Game Pass for PC and for uh, console. So you only need one. You don't have to have. Uh, one or the other, and it is cross-play, so if you've got friends on one or the other, you can play with each other. 
And I think that's going to do it for this episode. So let us know what you think about Full Metal Furies in our podcast services, wherever you like to listen to, iTunes, etc. And we will see you next time. Later.